What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined as always by the two greatest co hosts of all time in Matthew Spawnauer and Theo Ash. Matt, you're actually in South Carolina right now. I don't I am. do. Do people know that you're from South Carolina? Some of them do. Some of them question how I can be a Cincinnati, OSU, and Panthers fan. Uh, but yes. I am from South Carolina. I am visiting family right now. And my mom Congre- says hello to both of you. Oh, I also say hello. Tell your mom I said hi, man. Congratulations for leaving the state of Ohio. <laughs> they, actually, I leave the state of Ohio almost daily. Cincinnati is right on the border, so I go to Kentucky plenty of times. Uh, just like run errands. And is Kentucky really better than Ohio, though? <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I've really only been in a very, very small part of it. Come on, like, but it is we, kind we of all know that Ohio is better. I can see that. But as always, make sure you guys subscribe, leave a review, like, comment, etc. All the things you can do to help grow this podcast on all platforms. And of course, make sure you follow at Stay Hot Pod on TikTok if you haven't already for some great content there as well. You know, Matt is in South mm-hmm. Carolina and uh, the Panthers lost. I'm in Ohio. The Browns lost. Theo is not in Wisconsin. I'm in Minnesota. I'm back home. And the Packers won. And I'd like to get into that a little bit because that was an insane game, that Packers versus Cincinnati the game. the only one with a team that won, won today. And it was a big narrative game for me. Obviously, the Bengals are uh, kind of an antagonist in the live, in the online presence of uh, Theo Ash NFL constantly coming after me after their hot start here. So definitely a lot at stake for me in this, in this Packers game. And it was one of the weirdest I've ever seen. Uh, Crosby missing, what, four kicks? Most of them happening in like 10 minutes of game time at the end of the game was just like, oh my God, what is going on? And um, the Packers should have won that game by more, I think, because usually Crosby, he hit like 27 straight field goals before this. Um, So it should have been a a pretty sizable win for Green Bay, but it ended up just being this slugfest. Yeah, but who was missing from Green Bay in that game? It was Jair, it was Zadarius Smith, the center, Josh Myers, Elton Jenkins, David Bakhtiari's been out. If you list the top 10 Packers, like most Kevin of them King. were out. <laughs> yeah, he was there. Was, yeah, he was, was in, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. But if you list like the top 10 Packers, a lot of them were not in this game. And we still got a win on the road against a 3-1 and Cincinnati team. So very good win for Green Bay, especially in hindsight now. The Vikings ended up winning and the Bears ended up winning. So... Key game, Devontae had 200-something yards, 211, I think. He was absolutely unstoppable in this game. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon both looked like top-tier running backs. Rodgers had some dimes all game. It's a, and it is a really it's amazing almost, how the pack... Yeah. This was almost a really bad... This is almost really bad for your Tyreek Hill best wide receiver in the NFL take. Yeah, I said that I go back and forth all the time and I'm not going to change my mind anymore, but Devontae really does make it hard sometimes. He really does. This was a fantastic game by Devontae Adams and he's j- up there with Tyreek and he might be number one, but I'll stick with Tyreek. Well, uh, Tay Adams wasn't the only receiver to go off in that game. Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase. Yeah, and he's been a guy, I was a little bit low on him coming out of LSU. He hadn't played in a year, uh, not a elite separator. Um, so I was, I still had a first round grade on him and everything, but I did have him as like wide receiver four or five. And he's been, you know, unstoppable. He's been every, every week. It's, he does something crazy. Yeah. I mean, he had six catches, 159 yards, touchdown. He had one that he took 70 yards. Like, yeah, th- those back shoulder to him. I mean, his concentration and he has late hands. So when the ball is coming at it, when you're a corner, you're looking at when he would put his hands out. So, you know, when the ball is coming, it's hard to do with chase because he reacts to the football so late. He's got that. That was something he possessed in college. And it's something that's translated here. He's been, he's been obviously fantastic, probably wins offensive rookie of the year. If the season would end right now, it's, he's been fantastic. Obviously he's got a pretty, a pretty big lead on it. You got to figure. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I don't even know who, 
yeah, go go. Person would be. I don't know either. Maybe Slater, but they'd never get it to give it to an they, old lineman. Yeah, we, I mean, like realistically, if any offensive lineman was going to win rookie of the they, year, it would they would have, have been. to let up like zero sacks or something, or have the narrative would have to start at the right time. You could do it, but you'd have to be straight up. Perfect. If Nelson couldn't win rookie of the year, and often like no offensive lineman's doing it. Yeah, I mean, it would have to be a pretty weak. That was a strong year because Baker had such a good rookie season and Saquon had such a good rookie season. If it was a really weak class, maybe someone like Quentin Nelson could. Um, obviously, we'll talk a little bit about Kadarius Tony later in this game. And if he keeps up his current pace, he might challenge for it. But right now, it's chased by a pretty substantial mar- margin. Or if Kyle Pitts, we'll talk about Kyle, Kyle Pitts, Pitts later. If he has... If he has more games like this, but Matt, you know, mm-hmm. how are you feeling? Bad. You okay? <laughs> it's not. Here's what kills me about this one is that I can handle Panthers losses, but they got my hopes up a little bit for this season. <laughs> Even after we lost to the Cowboys, I'm like, if we win this one, we four and one, got some more winnable games. Nope. And it's not the defense. Sam Darnold. He just isn't it. I really, I, I've been trying to see it with him. I've been trying to, you can't have games like this. You can't have games like this ever. I know he's playing a tough defense. I know the offensive line was also miserable, and that's half the problem too. Um, but unforced errors and missing touchdowns are just killing us right now. The offensive line can't block. The offense is very, very far from being good. Um, and even if we make the playoffs, how far are we realistically going with how the guys are playing now? Um, so I just, I just felt like Sam Darnold is not improved enough at this point in the season. He's yeah, still, he's, he'd have to get a lot better quick. He's benefited from very low expectations and a very low, mm-hmm. you know, standard that he has set for himself. If this was someone like, like anyone else really having the kind of start to the season yep. Sam Darnold has had, they would not get the kind of hype that Sam Darnold has gotten over. He's like, oh, is Sam Darnold I, I mean, good how now? Many, how many He's quarterbacks missed- are there that you would take over, that you, that you would take Darnold over right now? Maybe some, some of the rookies, or you would take Sam Darnold over? Yeah, some of the rookies and like Big Ben. <laughs> Right, Glad to Heineke. Hear you say that, man. I and might take him over. Maybe I don't even know. It's Heineke. I'd been probably good. take Heineke. Take, I can't lie. I would take Darnold over Heineke. I think I'm not the world's biggest Heineke guy, but um, yeah, he's just wanna... every single game yeah. he misses like a huge open touchdown or a huge play or he takes a bad sack or he makes a dumb pick. It's like it hasn't been quite as frequent as it was on the Jets, but it's not like he has been a at any point this season, like a top, like an A-tier quarterback. I mean, he's got, what, like six picks and four fumbles through five games. Yeah. I'm not, you just, I'm not incredibly impressed. (laughs) And even in the games, you're like, well, there was just one bad game. Even in the good games, they're putting up like 19 points on the Jets. We barely beat the Jets. If you really think about it, the Jets were in a close game with us. Or, you know, uh, the the Saints who were super beat up or the Texans who were beat up. So I'm just not feeling it with the squad. It's a mirage. It was a mirage. The Saints game really got people excited, but they were they well, were beat up and, and missing Matt, coaches. Matt, you called this. You you said that this was what was gonna happen. This, you know, you guys start off three and but then you realize that, you know, you haven't really played anybody and then you go to play I mean, Dallas. We're still only three and two. We could still win some games, but that end of the schedule is like Tampa Bay twice and Buffalo in the last four games. And I'm not looking forward to that. Yeah. And Gilmore coming back will help. But again, you get a it's bad not quarterback. Our problem. Our you, you, corners aren't yeah, the problem. right. You get a bad quarterback at bad offensive line and it, over the past couple of games, like Zeke did kind of run all over them and that offensive line of Dallas did kind of flatten them. Um, so it's not like the front seven is like maybe elite, elite, elite. So it's like just you need a pretty special team around them to overcome the issues on offense that they have. Well, uh, we, we said there are very few quarterbacks that we would take Sam Darnold over. 
Mac Jones might be one of those guys. You know, the Patriots, the Patriots offense, they won today. Um, but God, their offense, like not even just Mac Jones, their offense is stagnant. It, it's boring. There is nothing that when you watch that offense, you get excited about. Their O line isn't very good given it was hurt today. They can't run the ball. They can't throw the ball. You know, even when they have guys open, like they're dropping passes, it's, there's just so little going on with the Patriots that you're excited yeah, about. Yeah, it's, it's, they're not what they were supposed to be. And the driver and the engine of that team was supposed to be a very high level elite offensive line. And on paper, it looked like that before the season. But I know they were all hurt today, but even watching game one, it's like, wow, Isaiah Wynn is really strong. O- Owenu. Uh, their guard is like the only guy who's any good on that team or on that unit, at least yet this year. So the running game hasn't gotten going and that was supposed to be the engine of the whole offense. And then Mac Jones was just kind of there to hit the tight ends and Kendrick Bourne was supposed to have a ton of separation and like near and around the line of scrimmage. And then when they needed to take a deep shot, it would go to Aguilar and it was supposed to be very well balanced, but the running game was the engine and it's just not working out that way. And they did come back today. They did. But when it was when it was like 9 to, to 23 or whatever it was, I just didn't have any kind of confidence that they were high powered enough to do it. And when it gets into 3rd and 10, it's just like, man, they just are going to probably throw a screen here and hope something works out. They're just not explosive enough to dig themselves out of holes. And they did today against a horrible Houston team that gave them the ball at midfield, like every chance they could. Horrible trick plays, missed field goals, bad punts, gave them short field after short field that allowed them to come back. That, that punt off the back of someone's helmet. <laughs> right. That was if horrible. The Tex- yeah. If the Texans had competent special teams today, they would have beaten the Patriots. And like, yes, it was a comeback win, but in the future, every game that the Patriots play is going to be a losable game. Like, they will be the underdogs in a lot of them going forward, you know, or not big favorites. And I feel dumb. I picked the <laughs> Patriots to make the playoffs. But um, I, I, I don't know if I said this on here or on Green Room, but I am, I, I, I'm actively rooting against teams that I think would be better if they just signed Cam Newton <laughs> but won't. And I get, you know, you want to – I did defend – uh, Belichick, and I'll, I'll continue to defend Belichick a little bit. You want to give the rookie um, a, a fair shot and a try, and if you have Cam sitting behind them, what would people be saying right now? Um, I can respect that, but I do feel like the Patriots cut the guy that you game plan against on the team, and now you just aren't as scared of that offense. I know Cam was you know, prone to make mistakes a little bit, but he's also prone to make big plays, and that offense is one that definitely needs somebody who can you know, make big plays or can scare you a little bit. Or I'm willing draw to draw some defensive yeah. uh, attention. I, I know the that Patriots you know, were a very. F- no, you go, yeah. Theo. You go. I'm just going to say, like, I know that people point to Cam's touchdown to interception ratio last year. I'm willing to bet any amount of money last year's offense will end more effective than this year's offense in the long run. When you look at the numbers, well, here's here's all we're going to do. Okay, Cam Newton. If they want to do point to just the touchdown interception ratio and say that the rushing touchdowns don't count, fine. But then I am looking at Mac Jones stats with absolutely no context. Yeah. If he ends up with his more interceptions than touchdowns, I do not want to hear anything about, oh, well, actually, this is why. It'll be true. There'll be a good reason why Mac Jones has more interceptions than touchdowns. But I'm not going to hear it from the, you know, from the fan base that just told me that Cam was trash without, you know, putting context behind his stats. Right. Some context behind. Not some to mention Mac. Cam was a fantastic runner. And he, here's the thing. Not the entire fan base, I should say. My fault, well, here's the thing with. Uh, yeah, no, I know plenty of Patriots fans that are like, bro, I'd so rather have Cam Newton. Um, but their O line and their run game was so good last year, and now, huh? Cam's gone in the O line oh, and run game. A lot of a lot of the run game getting worse as their offensive line just is worse. Yeah, is, I'll, I'll give you that. Maybe the O line, but I think I but think yes, any- being able to run the ball with a guy like Cam or Lamar 
where you just have these like design QB. Just a, again, you know, a guy you have to game plan for. The most uh, anytime, threatening guy on that you, offense right now is Hunter Henry. Anytime you have to worry about the guy who's supposed to hand the ball off not handing the ball off, that makes it harder on the defense. Yeah, QB and runs can do with a thing. with a rushing quarterback are hyper efficient because it's a numbers game. Everything in football is about numbers, and when they were talking about this on the Bills broadcast, when the guy who usually just hands the ball off and then just watches is now actively involved in the play. That's an extra guy, and that's big time. So, yes, having a rushing quarterback does help your rushing game a lot. It's not the only reason why their rushing defense is bad now or offense is bad now, but it is a reason. And also, Matt, you're talking about touchdown to interception mm-hmm. ratio, like context to it. Mac Jones had probably four picks dropped today, and he had yes. a couple dropped versus Tampa Bay. He has been putting the ball in harm's way frequently this season and over the past couple of games. Um, so it's not like he's been like totally, totally like rock solid smart either uh, combined with like the lack of third and 10 conversions that I feel confident about with that physical ability. No, he had it. He should have thrown. He threw a pick today. He should have thrown at least four. Yeah. Like I, I remember vividly one where he threw over the middle and I'm like, there's three Texans there. No yeah, one in their right couple, mind is throwing that ball. There were a couple like that, but yeah, it was a rough game for Davis Mills. I think outplayed Mac Jones on this day, and Davis Mills played a game today that is like going to keep him in the league a while as a backup, you know, because he like was competent yeah. against Bill Belichick. So he earned some money today. I don't think that he's going to be a franchise guy for the Texans at all, but he looks solid today. He, he earned, he earned an extra year or two. Yeah. As a backup. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, one good game for a quarterback, three touchdowns, no picks, will uh, get you that. Will get you a couple more years to stick around. Matt so. Flynn special. Yeah, good for him. Um, <laughs> Matt Flynn. <laughs> well, Matt Flynn had Matt, like six s- touchdowns and five hundred yards. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was Davis awesome. Mills had three touchdowns. So, like, yeah, you know. he had a ridiculous pass. Uh, the second touchdown and the first touchdown was pretty good too. But there was one that he lofted it right over a corner, and this guy caught it. And there was a big big yak play but that was a ridiculous throw by him that it would be the best throw of of mac jones's career this far i'm not saying davis mills is better <laughs> i'm just saying like, no no you can say that the brakes i'm okay no i'm not gonna say that but i'm just gonna say like some people have need to pump the brakes on mac jones a little bit and that, that receiver anyway. put some respect on his name chris moore chris Cincinnati moore guy. my bad oh okay, Cincinnati. okay. Cincinnati guy, yeah <laughs> all right about to say he's on my on. fantasy team He's going to be on your yeah, fantasy but, team. <laughs> Moving on. Fantasy team. Well, you know, we could talk about the Patriots all day and how they have no weapons, but I think we should talk about a guy who's a fantastic weapon and someone who the Patriots would probably love to have right now, Kadarius yeah. Tony. Honestly, I have a pretty strong opinion. I think he's going to be incredibly good. I really don't think I – I know maybe this is an overreaction or whatever, but it's not – I guess I had the idea that he was going to be just like a yards after catch guy. He's not. He's so good. And that first catch he had on the side, I'm like, oh, my God, this guy's ridiculous. Uh, he, I think he would have gone for 200 if he didn't, like, punch somebody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that was – He's really – He's really exci- – I, was, I, I, was, I tweeted him. I was like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> It's a very Florida University thing to do. <laughs> if, if you told me in five years that he was going to be a top 10 receiver or whatever, or you told me that he was going to develop into that, I would not be surprised at all because it seems like he has the talent for it. Yeah, it really I, does. Elite players, I've, I've said this before, it's not that hard to spot them. It, is, it, doesn't take, look good. it doesn't take long to figure out like, oh, that guy. Yep. Who is that? I mean, watching that guy is, looks good. That guy looks really good. Like against Arizona or I'll use an Arizona State example. Going to like the first game, it took me probably a half a quarter to look at Jack Jones, the corner number zero. Like, like he's been there for a while, but like this year, especially, I was like, zero, that guy's the best player on the defense. It took in that, and like at the time, it would probably have been like, what? But then later, you're like, oh, Kadarius Tony against the Saints. He caught this pass. It was like third and 18, juked out half the like defense and converted it in a situation where like no one else would have converted it. And like right then and there, I was like, whoa, like I had a first round grade on Tony. So it wasn't like a total shock, but his bag of tricks with the ball in his hands is as deep as anybody's. It's It's the deepest. It's the deepest. (laughs) It is the deepest. He is the hardest. He broke 
seven tackles in the game against the Saints. Derrick Henry never broke more than five in any game last year. So he did that on six catches. He's so slippery. Plus, you look at the route running that he exhibited today. He made some tough catches today. It's like, well, okay. So if he can do all those things, like what's the problem? If he just drops 180-something yards and. Jason second. Garrett, probably. Yeah, true. True. Uh, I was a little bit worried when he got drafted by the Giants. It's like, okay, kind of a gadget player at Florida. Is Jason Garrett in a crowded wide receiver room going to utilize him effectively? And I was like, eh, probably not. But there's been some injuries, and now they've been forced to kind of use him like a real guy. And look at him now. And he uh, he's a baller. He is a baller. There's the only thing that is like, he looks a little bit unnatural catching the football still. He he had some drops um, and he looks to make a move like as he's catching the ball. So I'm guessing that'll be a pretty consistent theme in his career is like maybe some bad drops, but everything else he does is so special that it probably won't be a huge deal. Yeah, it's just like if you can get the ball in his hands, yeah, I don't think it matters how. Right. End arounds, screen passes. You just got to get him the ball. Yeah. He's, uh, he's just that special. He looks Especially, incredible. we don't know how long Saquon's going to be out. Oh, brutal brutal injury Daniel game. Oh, my God. Out. Daniel Dude. Jones, Saquon, and Galladay. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, my yeah. God. Like, they probably would have lost this game even with all three of those guys. But it's like, why even try when your maybe best three offensive players are out? Like, goddamn. Yeah. I, that's it, it's definitely brutal, and especially like not knowing how long these guys are going to be out. You know, it, it's going to definitely set the Giants back a little bit because I know Giants fans that were getting pretty excited. Daniel Jones was starting to look really nice. Yeah, um, I mean, I picked them to upset the cow the Cowboys. I thought that was very possible. I thought, like, if there is a weakness with the Cowboys, I think it's they're still their defensive line. It's not super great, but they mm-hmm. haven't played any great running teams. And I thought maybe with Joe Judge and Saquon, Joe Judge might have the mentality to just be like, well, let's just try running them over. And I thought that actually might work. But (laughs) once Saquon got out and they got down, it was kind of tough to do that. So that remains to be seen. No, They definitely could have ran the ball a lot with just Daniel Jones and Saquon. Yeah. And I think that's the way to beat the Cowboys because through the air, the other guy we got to talk about is Trayvon Diggs because now he's got another interception on the season. He's probably the defensive player of the year if it ended right now. I mm. wonder if the interceptions are saying that Trayvon Diggs is just a little bit better than he actually is because he did he he yes and no passes where he got it's like it's like a Marcus Peters thing. Marcus Peters right. is really good, but. Is he the best because he gets the most interceptions? I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, he's definitely a gambler. And there was a pick, the pick he had today, the guy looked wide open. Like, I would throw the same pass. You know, if you look at that, you'd be like, oh, he's got (laughs) multiple steps on Trayvon Diggs. Just throw it out in front of him. But then as soon as he threw it, Trayvon Diggs sped up and just caught up right to him and, and caught the ball instead. And that was something I noticed in the Panthers game. And I made a video about it. I was like, I almost, he was playing way off DJ Moore. And with DJ Moore, they just threw it to DJ Moore and he got yards. But I was almost like, he's playing so much farther off than all the other corners. I wonder if he's just trying to yep. bait him into throwing it his way. So he can like maybe yeah. make a play No, he on definitely, it. Trayvon Diggs last year, I, I said before, he was trying so hard to just be this like press man corner <laughs> Because that's kind of what he was at Bama, right? And he wanted to kind of continue that into the NFL. Didn't work. He was bad. Yes. And well, now you- I, I think, you know, they have Dan Quinn as their defensive coordinator. Maybe they had a conversation. Maybe Trayvon Diggs just figured it out. But he he looks so much more patient. And he's just yeah. like, I'm just going to sit. I'm he's He understands what kind of athlete he is. He's a fantastic athlete. And he's six foot three. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. He's built like Richard Sherman, except he's faster. So if he's like, I'm just going to give these guys space, and if they're going to make the mistake to throw it at me, I'm going to make them pay for it. You know, he's sitting here, and he's got to be thinking about this. The players would be like, I don't care about the stats. They care about the stats. They do. He's sitting here with six and five games, right? Yes. 
The record is 14, and he has an extra game. He's got to be going for it, right? Right, and and he, he, oh yeah, he's definitely have that in the back of his mind. And here's the thing, what and like kind of my overall point with him is like, there might be times where the guy he's guarding looks wide open, and they might actually be wide open, but it might just be him baiting him like he was today. And that's my only yeah. thing is like, if he is really this prolific at getting picks, because his ball skills are legit fantastic. Like he was a really good no, wide he's, receiver he's, in college. Like he catches things like he's like a damn good like, contested catch artist. So I <laughs> so, wonder if someone was be saying like, he's a better receiver than 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 uh, Stefan Diggs. Oh boy, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe maybe. Uh, but uh, I wonder if it's just like he'll just get in people's heads where it's like. Oh my! He looks open over there, but is he just going to close on it and pick me off like like a mind game almost? If he's like playing that, these, that's kind uh, of what happened in the Eagles game, where Devontae Smith runs that that kind of speed out route, and Jalen Hurts goes to hit. He's like, oh, because he's open. Dude has like eight, ten yards of separation, and Diggs as soon as soon as Jalen Hurts like cocked back his arm to throw, Diggs plants his foot in the ground. Pick six. Yeah. And he almost now, had two to more fair, picks. Uh, he almost had two Smith more fell. picks today. So it's like he might mm-hmm. get burned in guessing in man coverage sometimes. But if he's just going to be this it's prolific. Worth it. Yeah. He if he's going to be this. Yeah. At least not frequently. <coughs> Tony got him today pretty bad. But it was it was a long time to be covering someone like Tony. Like You would kind of, I think in today's league, you'd rather have your corner get got some. You know, I, I know I just said that yeah. the interceptions don't always say you're locked down, but I'd rather have my corner get got sometimes if they're going to get them sometimes. You you know, it's, yeah. it's more yeah. of a... Especially, when, you're, can we force especially when your offense is as good as Dallas and they're going to convert <laughs> those turnovers into points every yeah. time. I mean, you look at Xavier Howard, who's probably the other great ball hawk in the league. He's probably not... Totally, totally, totally as locked down and as like athletically gifted as like Jair and um, Ramsey, but it's like you create ten extra possessions for your offense. That's potentially like several more wins. So it all it all works out. And the the only problem pick off enough, they'll just stop throwing to you. Yeah, it, it, the biggest problem is, is just that like. That high level of interceptions isn't sustainable, right? No one's going to go out and get... I hate when you say things aren't sustainable. I don't <laughs> it isn't. Shuts the hell up. No one goes for like three, four years yeah, with 10 plus yeah, turnovers. He's, yeah, he's not catching an interception a game for the rest of the season. But 14 is doable. Yeah, 14 is doable. My thing is like with guys like Xavier Howard, it's like Xavier Howard's not going to lead the league in interceptions twice, three years in a row. Well, he did. It. Right, like, he did do it twice. I think. Like, there was a stretch where he was like picking off a pass ever. And like, you look at Trayvon Diggs. It's like, yeah, he's not going to pick off a pass every game for the rest of his career. But his ball skills aren't going away. And a lot of it, balling. if it yeah. if it doesn't get sustained, I think a lot of it is going to be because they just don't really want to throw to Trayvon Diggs that much anymore. And then that's <laughs> impacting the game just as much. Yeah, good you corners know, I, are good I wanna, corners. I want to talk a little bit. It's delayed right now. But can we talk a little bit about the Chiefs-Bills game? I'm glad it's delayed because I don't have it in front of me, so I haven't seen it since the delay happened. I have it on my TV, but, yeah, it's just delayed right now. Josh and- Allen having seven completions for 200 <laughs> yards is hilarious. <laughs> it's so funny. Dude, the Chiefs' defense, oh, my God. It's, it's just – it's pitiful. It's There's so no other bad. Word for it. It's pitiful. And – it's been like the same problems for like how many years has Daniel Sorensen been a starter on the Chiefs? It's like, Wait. can you not find someone better? I mean, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get too much on on one dude, but like, I, I, I have to agree. I, I feel like yeah. ever since Mahomes has been there, I mean, it's just been like, there's got to be someone else. There's got to be somebody else. He's been a starter. It happened with the Vikings. They started this guy named like I think it was Shamar Stefan. For like five years, he was like horrible every year. It's like find someone different. It's the same deal with Sorensen. It's like what is he doing out there? Yeah, the Browns had a horrible safety last year, and they got rid of him. Like, but the the player I want to really shout out 
is Dawson <laughs> Knox will eventually become very. I don't know if I have on the podcast, but maybe I have, and I'm making you guys listen to like is he on the your same fantasy team? Takes over and over. No, you, you've you've mentioned liking Dawson Knox, but you haven't really gotten. He into is it. very. He is legitimately very good, and he is one of those guys where just sometimes with the tight end position, it's not like other positions. It takes a long time for you to get good. And sometimes a dude won't do all that much for four or five years. And then they really start to rev up and Knox has, uh, he's not been in the league that long, but he is, he's up next. I think he'll be a really, really good tight end. Uh, he for had, a while here. yeah, he had one of the most brutal, like stiff arm trucks I've ever seen in my life. I think that was him last year. He just, I can't remember the he's game. He's just a, he's a bully and that's what you look for. <laughs> in a tight end, I think. Right. Exactly. You're not wrong. Yeah, kind of and how Gronk is. That is how all the great ones are. That's how all the great ones are. And <laughs> yeah, and so I, I think with tight ends, it's easy to lose the hype on them because it takes so long. But watch out for him. Let's see how he does the rest of the season. I think he's got four. Or five Let's see how he does the rest so of this far. game. Yeah, I mean, he yes. already has two catches, seventy-six yards, and a touchdown. Nope. <laughs> it's like there's yep. no what's stopping him from getting another touchdown. You know, another it's, five catches. I think certainly it's like, not Sorensen. No, <laughs> this Chiefs defense is hilarious to watch. And my favorite player is Tyron Matthew because he's the, the vocal leader of that defense. And he's so animated on the field. And if you were to take a shot every time he had his hands up in disgust, you would be drunk by halftime in every single Chiefs game. It happens so much. It's hilarious watching it on film. How much Tyron Theo Matthew knows because he's played this game. He's Tyron Matthews <laughs> has his head on hands on his head tw- two times tonight. There's been like screenshots I've seen and Tyron Matthews at the foreground, like covering his eyes and like Daniel Sorensen's getting burned in the back. Tyron Matthew <laughs> at some point, at some point this year, I'm I've been watching all of his press conferences after the game because at one point this season, he is going to he's going to become the Joker and he's going to snap and it's going to happen at some point. Cause he's- I feel, I feel really bad. I think it's underrated how hard that would be. Like if you were frustrated, I mean, you guys have been frustrated oh, about yeah. things and you know, you say yeah. like you say how you really feel and you can't do that when you're doing a press conference. So the fact that those guys don't lose it, I don't want to say lose it, yeah. but like don't say what they shouldn't <laughs> more often after playing football for four hours, which you have to be so aggressive for is, is pretty insane. Because I know, yeah. I know, if you put me on a team and we started losing, I would. Yeah, you'd, you'd probably, a, <laughs> you'd probably I get would, traded. Dude, I'm you, that type of guy. You, you are that type of guy where you'd show up in the press. Room problem. You would be a locker room problem. <laughs> you'd show up to the press conference and everyone would be like, oh, he's in a mood. He, we're, we could get some really good stuff out of this. And they would just prod and poke. I think you. I would, I, I've, I've thought about this. I would take, I would take the fine. I wouldn't do it. I would, <laughs> there's just no way. I, I, How much is the fine? I have no idea. I mean, Joey Bosa got fined like thirty grand a couple days ago for. Uh, Depends on how good I. Here's the problem, <laughs> I wouldn't be very good. The lions. So, the lions are. <laughs> the lions are listening to this. Like you would. You would do what? You'd say what? <laughs> I would. I would. You know. I actually want to. If that's a good transition. The poor Lions. They don't deserve this. They don't. What Dan, did they do? Dan Campbell <laughs> was crying after the game, like, oh, it, at, his, at his press conference, if we're talking about Lions press conference, he was yeah. in tears after the game, like, our guys just deserve a win so much, and we keep losing these close games. They're like the best 0-5 team ever. They, they've they held tough against some good teams here. They are. And, you know, I, I... Reminds me of the 2017 Browns. I salute... I I think some people I saw were not a fan of Campbell for doing that. Or it's like, oh, you can't. I have no problem with it. I think it's just been losing on a sixty-six yard doink. It's brutal. After fourth and nineteen gets converted, would change you forever. It you would. would never trust anything ever again. <laughs> um, and he's trying so hard, and they went for two, and they got it. He wants to get him a win so bad. I know. And you can tell the team, like, they're not this bad. They're not 0-5 bad. Are they the only – no, Jacksonville. Yeah, Jacksonville is, is also winless. But they're going to get one. Yeah, and they're th- going to be I, – I, I believe in the future of the Lions. They will be I, a solid team. I do, too. And the they've got – They've got something that most bad teams don't have, and that is an identity and like something they yes. are good at. And that is running the ball and just being physical, although they still aren't that good at tackling at all. But like DeAndre Swift at some point at the end of the game 
trucked, I think it was Breland, so bad that I like audibly was like, oh my God, when I saw it. And it's like that kind of, <laughs> that running game with Williams and Swift. And even Goff is not playing like horrible. Like no one on the offense is really even playing all that terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, but it's like, they have an identity. They have a coach that is 100% committed which, you know, you look at the 0-5 Jaguars and you may think like, oh, maybe not every 0-5. Not, not quite the same right. when it comes to a coach that's 100% <laughs> committed. But I do believe in the future of the Lions as well. And they are a division rival of my Packers, but I, I do root for them to get a get a win here one of these days because I like Campbell. So how – not to change the subject, but how, how do you guys think you would do in a press conference? Oh, I'd be great. You think you'd be great? Actually, yeah, you would be. <laughs> you would be great. I mean, you you see me after the flag football games. That's true, right? Like, That's true. They you, what about like, you, they, they turn the live stream on me and they do like they like ask me these like weird questions and I'm just like, I mean, as a sports chill. as a sports journalism major and someone who has had to analyze press conferences and ask questions for press conferences oh. before, uh, I think that yeah, I kind of yeah, yeah. know the the tricks and the tips that you would have if you're a coach and like what the media does and doesn't want to hear. I do dislike how everything is very, you know, you can't actually, you have to talk, but you can't actually say anything. Um, I feel it's like, like I, what's that? you should just let guys not talk if they don't want to talk, honestly. Because if they don't want to talk, they're just going to give them but, non-answers. But no know? one wants to talk. I'm just saying so like, I don't get fined. <laughs> No one wants to talk, so it's like if you gave them that choice, there would be no content because no and player honestly, wants I'll, to talk. I'll be real with you. Press press conferences have a pretty low hit rate on interesting things actually happening. Oh yeah, but like post like I don't usually care unless it's my team or something. How long do you get between the time of the game ending and the time that you have to go to the press conference? Not that long, probably. 45 minutes, maybe 30. I think if I had minutes. 45 minutes, I'd be, I think it would just be hard to go from playing in a football game to giving way, precise, I'm, you know, probably perfectly game worded ends, answers. You go back to the locker room, you change, quick meeting with the coach, and then probably press conference. I think I could, I think I could pull it off. Yeah. I, I think it's, if I had to do it right after on the field interviews, then I'd be a little, but that's true for everybody. Everyone would be a little emotional, a little. Except for yeah, Otter yeah, you have to like the, calm the most down infamous first. press conference I can remember is Cam Newton after the Super Bowl. That's probably yeah, the most. I was thinking the same thing. That's probably the most like visibly because he was genuine. Don't make me. I know this. He I, was I'm genuinely not, upset. What was yes. he said? Oh, great, we lost the Super Bowl. But if he had done that, then people would be like, "Oh, look, he doesn't care." No, no, I, I'm sad. not saying. People are like, oh, why is he so sad? I'm you just know? saying that that's probably <laughs> like the most interesting or infamous press conference that I can think of. Uh, Maybe I'm missing some like mm-hmm. crazy, and also the Rogers, one. the Rogers won this off season when he came out and was like visibly detailing like every single thing that he felt mm-hmm. and like wasn't mincing words. And I feel like more press conferences should be like that because a lot of them are just word salads and kind of incentive. Anyway, this is the oh, journalism the, side of me. The Chiefs talking. game is back. Oh. Chiefs Bills game is back. Nice. That's where we were originally at. Without Chris Jones, yeah. this defense has like no good, like clearly has no good players. It's it's crazy the lack of high end talent they have. Tyron Matthews a very good safety, a very very good safety, but I, I think he's maybe you can only do so much. You can only do so yeah. much, and he kind of ducks out of tackles sometimes, which you know maybe the 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 top like three safeties wouldn't. But he's he's still very good, but. See, now I'm interested. I wonder how much they're spending on this defense. Probably a lot. Probably Veach is not good. Veach is not a good GM. Everyone thinks he's such a genius because they they ignore the cap and they get, win all in. And he's like, how are they signing this many guys? And they're going to realize that Veach is not as good as they think he is in about a year or two here. Anyway, I digress. Any yeah, other games you know. want to talk you about? Know, Blade, I, we haven't talked about the Browns Chargers game yet. And that game you was. Deserve to. You deserve to. And it was legitimately, you know, anytime a game has over a thousand total yards, it's uh, lots of interest. That means it's a, a lot one. of interesting things happen. Listen, man. Listen. <laughs> Listen. What top five are you smoking, man? Because my top five is Chubb and Hunt, Chubb and Hunt, Chubb and Hunt, Chubb and Hunt. I have seen like this exact tweet. 
about maybe like twenty five. Yeah. And they're and it's all because of me. Yes. You know, it might be. I think, and it's not. No, I, I, that sound on TikTok. I have four of the top video. I have all four of the top videos. Bang. I have three I, of those videos that have over four hundred thousand. That's, that's your influence. It is. It is. I'm carrying. Is. I'm carrying that sound right now. But the Browns, man, the offense looked good, right? There was yeah. that Odell drop, but like, who cares? Baker looked um, good. Baker, bounced Baker looked game. good, which again, it's like that game from a week ago isn't that's that's not going to happen every single week. No. You Hopefully know, not. I could sit here and blame the refs because there was that like that pass interference. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can do that with a def- lot of games. It was a bad call, it, though. It was it was, it was a very bad, bad call. My team. But. The Browns were up 42-41 with like three-ish minutes left. And the best run game in the league, you've got to The best run out. game in the NFL, the best offensive line in the NFL. Our offense mm-hmm. was rolling all day. We have 42 points. The offense was rolling. And we and go... They had a lot of momentum. <laughs> we had all the momentum. Which, ironically, that, yeah. was gonna be, uh, that was going to be the original name of our podcast. Anyway, but go on. And the, my point is, yeah, the Browns were up 42-41 with the ball. Best run game in the NFL. Offense was rolling. We go three and out and punt. We get four yards on that drive. And then the Chargers drive down the field and score, and we can't do anything after that. Like, Well, like the I, offense not scoring on like one drive, I don't think was like the main problem. I it, think it's, the, not, it's not that we didn't score. The bigger score. problem it's in that, that game was that you allowed. Okay, no, no, no. I, I over-exaggerated here. The Browns, I said there were three minutes left. The Browns had the ball with a minute 13, up one point, best run game in the NFL, rolling offense, and we went three and out and punted. You got to get the, I mean, the, the Browns' identity should be being able to control the or, ball when we're no, it was three. Can, f- the drive was a minute 13. We used three, still, it was three minutes. Yeah. Still, but like, I, I think you got to be able to close that one out with the best run. You have to at least get past a two minute. It's win. obviously not mostly the offense's fault, but that if, if you told the Browns that they would be up one, three minutes with the ball first and 10 in any game, you would figure they'd want to take that. Right. You, so that's where I'm like, as much as I want to sit here and complain about how bad the officiating was with that that pass interference call, that's that didn't lose us the game, right? It helped, <laughs> but that's I that 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 drive three plays four yards a minute thirteen. That's that you that's the worst drive we had all game. You I know, would say the other problem the Browns had Justin Herbert is. Not regressing to the mean. No, he's not. <laughs> he is actually just amazing. Yeah, that is. I was like, <laughs> and Mike Williams had two wide open touchdowns. And my hot take. I don't know if this is true or not. I really haven't thought it through that much, but they're definitely up there. If you were a general manager and you could take over any team, the Chargers might be top three, one on the list because they yeah. have an elite, 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 elite quarterback on a rookie deal for this season and three more. And it, uh, and what seems gonna... to be a great head coach, Derwin James, Joey Bozo, the bones are there. And I said before, when I made my Chargers are overrated video, and like my thing is like, I think I said the only quarterbacks like who have had great rookie seasons and then like not had a sophomore slumped and like actually taken that jump into being an MVP candidate their second season, like really the only time you've seen that is. Peyton Manning and Dan Marino are like the only two who've taken that d- jump into the MVP candidate. So my logic was like, is her- odds not good, odds not good that yeah. he's as good as like a Peyton Manning, Dan Marino caliber guy, but he has done what those two did. So it's like, Oh, he's just, I mean, he's just incredible. He's incredible. Um, I think he's he a top five and quarterback. I, I, tweeted, in the league. I, I, I do. I, think I he's tweeted top out five. Justin Herbert's arm is terrifying. Yeah, there were a number of times where the Browns got pressure on him, and he would just like recontort his body and just launch it away, like like no one else in the league is doing that, barring maybe Mahomes, Allen. Like those are the only guys where it's Allen. like 
play totally breaks down and you still find a way to put together, you know, some sort of salvageability in a play. Yeah. He's just like a, he's just like the perfect quarterback. He, he's like the perfect quarter, the arm strength. He's huge. He's six foot six. He can run. He's smart. He was like a, he was like a biology major at Oregon with like a 4.0 GPA, which I do think matters. It's like memorizing playbooks, just being a smart person. Yeah, tall, being smart is good. Big, yeah, smart is good. Smart, huge, huge arm, accurate, you know, consistently good. And he was someone that came in in his first game, right? And Tyrod had like punctured his lung in that like freak accident. He knew he was going in like five minutes before the game against the Chiefs. That was his first start. And he looked fantastic. And again, it doesn't take long to recognize elite players. Like, it does it. Like, Mahomes, like, mm-hmm. against the 49ers, it was real early in his MVP season, which was his first season as a starter. You could tell Herbert instantly. Just, yeah. It's just, like, clear. And with Herbert, it was clear early, and he has not slowed down since, and he just keeps getting better and better and better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's really remarkable to see. Now, to be fair... Um, Mike Williams had two wide open touchdowns. Yeah. Where it was just like broken coverage by the but Browns every, defense. Every, In this, every quarterback's going to get some gimmies. Two out of yeah, five. Yeah, but it was the same. Touchdowns, yeah. Two yeah. gimmies that were uh, on the same play, like on the exact same like route. <laughs> like, I, I, I would need to wait for the all 22 to know defense. exactly what, what happened there because there was some sort, someone screwed up pretty badly. Yeah. Like, I don't know who Watching it was. the Browns defense is a little bit aggravating. I can't lie. Um, especially when Anthony Walker is on the field. Like, I'm glad he's healthy, but can he just be a healthy scratch? That dude is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that glad he's healthy, but can he be a healthy scratch? I don't think all. I think every every single week. You've said something about him. You are not a fan of Anthony Walker. Every week it's there's like, there's the Browns guy. Last year it was Sandejo, and now it's Anthony Walker. Yeah, so it's it's Anthony just gonna Walker. Be, they're Sandejo could be not the, play last They're going to be the scapegoat. And now, and, it, like, I know Colts fans were, to, were, like, raving about how good he is. And maybe he was good for the Colts. But he is not good for the Browns. He is the last man to the football. He has the worst pursuit on the team. Like, he doesn't do anything well. I can't believe he let Mike Williams get behind him for some 70-yard touchdowns. <laughs> that was Listen, so man. I, <laughs> yeah, I Dude. don't know what happened there. I assume there was just miscommunication. But like, John Johnson, when, and then whether it was, like, Grant Dope or whoever was at the I don't know safety. if I'm going to go watch the All-22 of that game, but when you guys go, look, look and find what that is. Because I keep hearing great things about Every single player in the Browns secondary. I said this last episode. I, I don't mean this as like an insult to anybody. Like, what is it? What's is it? Just miscommunication, and everybody's actually awesome. I have a hard time believing that a little bit. I can't lie. Yeah, it's. I'll, I'll check it's it like, out when the all twenty two drops. Okay, I assume what's, what's, that it's the safeties. I assume when when guys are getting behind the defense like that, it's usually one of the last lines of defense. A miscommunication. Is, is a way to phrase the defense messing up that doesn't really put it on anybody, but it's more likely just like somebody messed up. <laughs> yeah. Somebody yeah. missed their assignment. Yeah. But sometimes like a miscommunication is like, oh, one person sees, like, let's say, let's say you say, um, cause obviously the defense has a guy that like makes like line calls and whatever. Of course. It's like maybe we'll yeah. say like, for example, we'll say John Johnson's that guy. Mm-hmm. So John Johnson sees something pre-snap and he calls it out um, and somebody either doesn't hear it or like does it like for what maybe just doesn't get relayed like that kind of stuff can happen. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah I don't know. Matt, no, I will, I'm, not, I'm not saying Matt, I will. I will watch the entire game and I will figure out exactly who it is and I will make a TikTok video about it and I will I will place the blame on someone. And I will get to the bottom uh, of this I, mystery. There is, there really is definitely someone else at fault other than Anthony Walker for the Browns' defensive struggles. I will get to the bottom of it. I will investigate. My my frustration, I just hear every – it's like it can't be true. They can't keep like – if they, you can't let up 47 points and everybody's actually awesome but one dude. Yes. That doesn't – that does not yeah. make sense. No, you're right. Me. Anyway. Because I, I, right. I, didn't, I didn't catch most of the game. Um, yeah. 
But it was well, it, would, it wouldn't have mattered anyway because the angle at which they show the games, you don't get that's, to see what's going on in the, the back worst. end of the defense. Very it's true. the worst. It's the worst possible angle for games. All right. Well, is there any other games that we want to talk about? Uh, I'm trying to think. I, I do some. want to shout out Marshawn Lattimore. All right. He had six pass breakups today. He was on Terry McLaurin, a guy who's been lighting up just about everyone this season. Marshawn Lattimore has these weird games where he's like the best corner ever. And today was one of those games and he got paid and he's been up and down in his career. He had that really great rookie season. And then he kind of had some down seasons. So when he got paid, I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Today he was awesome. And this season really against Devonte Adams, he was really good. And now today, I mean, six pass breakups is what I saw. That's, that's a ridiculous number, especially against a guy like uh, McLaurin. So the, uh, that's the other thing I want to say is I want to give that, if we talk a lot about quarterbacks here, I want to give Marshawn Lettimore some credit for, for a really nice season that he's having right now and a really great game that he just had against Washington. And Marquez Callaway caught a Hail Mary. Let's go, Marquez. If, um, if you guys don't mind, we got to get into some college football. Oh, yeah. Are you because... just going to talk about Cincinnati again? Uh, ASU no, is... I'll, I, I can, <laughs> a- I can ASU skip is winning... Cincinnati entirely. Okay. ASU is winning well, yes, the Pac-12 AS- and making the and making the college football playoff. Uh, I'm uh-huh. afraid. Yes. Just say, don't say Cincinnati. Say number three ranked <laughs> Cincinnati. Um, anyway, Alabama, Texas A&M. I don't know if we said it on the pod or if I just tweeted it out, but I'm sick and tired of hearing all the Alabama and Georgia were unbeatable. No one will touch them. No one will come close. Well, Alabama just lost to an unranked team. And Alabama looked more than very human. Um, I'm stunned. I, I I don't know what to tell you. I almost I was this close to giving up on the game. Texas A&M looked totally dead in the water for the entire second half. No momentum. It was over for them. And I'm and I'm, I'm telling you, I t- I text Bladen. I'm like, <laughs> you you saw this, Theo. I'm like, I did. please tweet about them. <laughs> and I know I'm being like a, a dumb fan, getting too into it. Superstition's not real. The second he tweets about them, all of a sudden the offense is perfect. Quarterback makes a miracle throw, gets and, hit. And, and he definitely you know tore his ACL. <laughs> nope. Comes back in. Game winning drive. Come on. Bladen is more you real know, than it's momentum. Interesting because listen, apparently I have like a curse. That any time that I'm like actively tweeting about a team, they lose. Um, Dude, it's look. Alabama de- deserved to lose that game. They must. have I have no idea what the actual number is, and I won't look it up. But it must have been ten drop passes. I, it was just totally crazy. The number of times that Texas A&M did a good job in the first half defensively, and they were sending a bunch of different crazy looks, and they were getting pressure, and they were playing great. But eventually in the second half, the offense just completely stalled and couldn't do anything. And then Texas A&M's defense was just gassed. They didn't have it anymore or Saban made adjustments or something. And you're like, okay, Alabama can take control of this game. But they had they bailed out A&M so many times with so many drops. And then it was multiple first and goals that ended up being field goals that they should have they shouldn't have kicked. I mean, they were running it down Texas A&M's throat. They had no ability to stop them at all. Even even when they stopped them, they got five yards. You know what I mean? There's some games like that where it's like he can always fall for it. He always pushes forward. First and goal from the five, three passes in a row field goal. You deserve to lose that game. Saban deserved to lose that one. Terrible game. You said that we were like, oh, Saban and Georgia unbeatable. I do want to say that I said – that Georgia was the only unbeatable one. And I said that it's more likely that Alabama drops one than Georgia does. And Georgia just beat ranked Auburn by 24. And I always have been saying that they're the best team, not Alabama. So I want to give myself some credit for that because that defense is scary hours. And those linebackers especially are very, very, they're acting a little bit different. So Georgia is yeah, a real, I, was, I was always the one that was saying that Bama. Yeah, you were the one who was always like Bama will roll again. No one's even close, and uh, it's actually you guys should have been on this the whole time. But it's actually Georgia that's the one that no one's even close to. But they could still well, lose. I'll, I'll, they could still lose. I'll, but I'll, I'll, also, the playoff implications for this are: I had a lot of people comment angrily that Alabama could just still win out and make the playoffs. Absolutely, but. I've been thinking about the playoffs uh, in the context that the SEC is 
a lock to get two teams in because the idea would be that if Bama and Georgia both meet in the SEC championship game undefeated, both of them, regardless of the outcome, will make it to the playoffs one way or another. Now, if Georgia wins a two-loss Alabama, probably, almost certainly won't get in. It won't get in when there's a one-loss ASU, that's for sure. Uh, or not when there's a zero loss Cincinnati, <laughs> ASU versus Cincinnati in the uh, in the college football playoff, truly the uh, game of the century upcoming. Wait on it. What we've all been now. Asking now here's for. the real question, right? Is mm-hmm. there a scenario in which two Big Ten teams get in? Yes. It would be like, Iowa. Okay, maybe, let's say Alabama, it would be because Alabama Iowa loses is the SEC like, championship game to Georgia, and then Iowa. It's Iowa and Ohio State in the in the Big Ten Championship. Ohio State wins. That's not enough. You would need Michigan to win out. Yeah. Michigan what Michigan wins out, loses to Iowa. A one loss Big Ten school that had beaten Ohio State, that had beaten Penn State, that had beaten Michigan State with like three really good wins. And then maybe you get like an Oklahoma loss in there or a Cincinnati loss. That could be it, but it, it's tough. It's not impossible, but you need a very yeah. specific set of especially because things. like okay. yeah, mi- it would pretty much have to be almost Michigan because Michigan or Michigan State probably. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit That's about fair. Oklahoma because Spencer Rattler came out and looked like shit Spencer as he has, Frodler. as he kind of has, and it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. But uh, <laughs> he was benched. <laughs> he was benched, and. I can't remember his name, and the Oklahoma people were like, stop calling him the backup quarterback. He has a name, and I can still never remember. Caleb what Williams? It. Yes, Caleb right? Williams. Caleb he Williams. came in, and he looked like, I was like, oh, my God, that was a Rodgers-esque throw right there. And I said that like three or four times during the game. And mm, that's perennial. What did it, what was 28-7, and they came back and won? Crazy, crazy stuff. But uh, I'm scored, rooting for they that was, They scored 25 in the fourth. Yeah. And that Texas running back, too. If I was him, I wouldn't play another snap in college football ever. I would sign my NIL deal, get a million dollars, and wait it out until uh, the NFL came calling. Because that dude is legit, 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 legit. And it's like, I, why would I, I'm not playing college football anymore. Just let me- I'm, I'm sorry. The top three, B, I'm looking at it right now. It's just, it seems unreal. The top three is Georgia, Iowa, Cincinnati. <laughs> This this is I, wait I, who's I, four I, who's four Oklahoma I'm sorry this the best possible argument for college football being better than the NFL was made last Saturday. There's just you can have crazy NFL games, but they're not quite like college football. You can have big upsets, but not like college football. You can have big uh, crowds, but you can't have 106,000 storming the field after you beat number one ranked Alabama. It's it's awesome. And I'm pretty sure the team. Packers could beat Alabama. Uh, they could probably beat number one ranked Alabama. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they could beat Alabama? You know, who didn't beat Alabama? But uh, is it Ole Miss? Told us. Yeah, that's yeah because that's Corral the college fall is, football team that you listen, talk man, about. That's Matt the Corral, grounds of college football. <laughs> Matt Corral, <laughs> their quarterback isn't their quarterback's better than Baker. Man. <laughs> Do not let the Browns fans <laughs> hear what you just said. But yes, you can you can quote me on that. All right, Matt okay, Corral, okay. bro, did you see that throw where he's like standing flat footed and he launches it like sixty four yards? Just like rainbow, beautiful trade, throw. Trade Odell to Ole Miss. That's all I'm saying. That's, I mean, it. That's awesome. He's no Ritter though. <laughs> I'm looking at you know. I'm looking at this Kentucky Georgia game coming up next week. Never number eleven ranked Kentucky Wildcats six and zero. They ha- they are given a five percent chance to win. They are twenty two and a half point dogs. So you're saying that's there's tough. a chance. It's, yes. Yes. Georgia. Georgia is ridiculous, and uh, I don't really have all that much more to say about college football. Except we last week we talked about Michigan and Ohio State, and I was like, "Oh, Michigan could get in," and I didn't really give much oh, thought yeah, yeah, yeah. about Ohio State getting in. But like, I look at Ohio State beating the brakes off Maryland, and yes, they beat a Rutgers team by a lot. And Michigan has now struggled against Rutgers, and they struggled last week. I'm like, Ohio State probably 
is like the best team in Michigan the Big Ten against their, Nebraska. Their corners will get better. Ohio State is rough. And I, I, I was saying that Ohio State was rough. But going back to it, you know what take I shouldn't have been talked out of? Their odds of making the college football playoffs are still better. And the big thing for them is that Stroud has looked significantly better, significantly more accurate. And if he can just be okay, the talent they have at receiver, the talent they have on that offense is something that no other team in the Big Ten is even coming remotely close to. Yeah, and if they do win out. the other real contenders. If they do win out and their one loss is against number what? like a top 10 Oregon team. They may not finish top 10, but at the time it was like a very good Oregon team. Like that's a pretty good one loss to have if that is if that With, is your win one loss. And they're probably going to be favored in just about every game they play the rest of the season. Well, I, I've, I've actually had people talking to me about this or asking me about it. Like, well, what if Ohio State wins out? Uh, Ohio State's one loss could have been to Akron. And if they won out, they would still easily get in. Yeah. Um. They're, the college football playoffs are as uncompetitive, as easy to get into as they've been in a long time, uh, with Clemson being completely out of it and whatnot. And, you know, Cincinnati has a good shot at it. Yeah, you, um, we, the top oh, three, we just went schedule. through them. It's, it's yeah, Georgia, yeah. Schedule, Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. There's well, if Ohio is, State wins out, they're beating Penn State, who's currently ranked fourth. Or no, no, they're not four now, are they? they no, and, and again, the AP polls are... The, but it's it's true. The schedule is very very strong, and they are Ohio State. And yes. they, the one thing that people don't take into account is that, or they do some. I, I forget to all the time. The committee cares about ratings, and no team is better for ratings than Ohio State. And I'm not saying that's why Ohio State will get picked, but in a toss up situation, they're always going to pick OSU. OSU was, will always get benefit of the doubt. They're a team that just made the national title last year. They have so much going for them. One loss against a top 10 school with a tough schedule and the second best conference. If they win it all, oh, yeah. Or if they win the Big Ten, oh, yeah. They're yeah. Right. No question. Yeah. No, I would almost anticipate that happening at this point. I, I don't know. I, I just, I was out on them too soon. And after they lost to Oregon and looked bad a couple weeks in a row there, I was like, oh, rebuilding year for them. But now it's like, oh, they're kind of, I'd probably favor them against any team in the Big Ten right now. So, and they're just, they just are Ohio State. So that's the only other college football team I, mm-hmm. I want to talk about. Totally fair. Um, I don't have anything else to say about Matt Corral. So that's <laughs> actually, no. So a lot of people are big fans of Malik Willis. Mm-hmm. Yes. But every time I see a highlight of him, it reminds me of watching Johnny Manziel highlights. He is okay. very Manzella. I saw that one play and I was like, yeah, it's a little Manzelli. But I don't know. It's, I don't think a being Manzell is a horrible plays. thing. I think the thing that was screwed over Manzell is that he just didn't have the mindset to be an M- NFL player. I feel like being Johnny Manzell, like as a talent, is not necessarily a total slight on you it, as a player. You it's know, not as long about as you're not like, oh, dressing as a up talent. as someone else and going to Vegas and like being that party guy, you know? I feel like that was Manziel's like, main problem. Johnny Manziel, Matt and I would talk about this all the time, about how all he it felt like he did in college was scramble around. Basically, he would run for 50, 100 yards in the backfield, and then he would throw a prayer up to Mike Evans. A little bit. Right? Johnny Manziel like, was great in college, but... You definitely looked at some of his highlights and you're like, I don't know if you're doing that in the NFL. Fair enough. I feel and, that, and I mean, I'm a Zach Wilson, Wilson hater, feels. so I could talk about Zach Wilson for a little bit and Kyle Pitts. Maybe that's what we can transition to. Uh, Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, Pitts was awesome today. I don't know why Calvin Ridley didn't go to Europe. Maybe he just didn't want to, but I guess that's what it took for them to be like, maybe we should throw it to the like, six foot seven number four overall pick let's let's throw it to the nba player <laughs> let's throw it to the 4.4 speed gigantic catch radius never drops a pass huge dude maybe we should get him a little bit more involved and uh look what happened they won against a horrible jets team and zach wilson the, the rookie who went somehow before kyle pitts i it's, I hope people are starting to see what I saw in college with him, where it's just like 
there are so many times like in that Houston game, which I broke down on my YouTube channel, it was like, these plays all went well in college, but these plays are all horrible plays in the NFL. And that's like three picks in a quarter. And he is currently on pace for a 34 interception season. And considering he's probably not getting benched no matter what, that's a pace I feel like he might be. Who would he get benched for? Exactly. James Morgan? I don't know. Mike White? No, he's not (laughs) getting benched. And it's just like, and he's throwing these picks from clean pockets too. It's not like he's always getting mugged when throwing up things. It's like, he's got a clean pocket. He's making a decision. Yes, his wide receivers have fallen over and dropped a couple picks, but man, the, the degree, there's been some horrible, horrible, horrible passes. And I, I said he wasn't a first round talent, much less one worse the second overall pick. And that's a take that I, I feel okay. Hey, about I said, I said Mac Jones is a day three prospect. That looked very good today. It, yeah, he's, he's someone that I don't know if day three, like day three, he's a useful player. When, I think. when was Davis Mills taken then? Day two. And Davis Mills looked better than Mac Jones. So okay. <laughs> that was <laughs> stretch, but okay. Um, <laughs> listen, man, the argument's there. The logic, yeah. the logic fits. We'll see if it gets that bad I, with Jones, but yeah. <laughs> One more college football thing I wanted to bring up. Go for it. You must have seen him. Darnell Washington for Georgia. Oh my God. The tight end. Have you seen this guy? He's the really big one, right? There's like, no, there's, yes. Oh my God. Six foot seven, That's one 270 of those, pounds. He's, he's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Rare body types are the other thing that, like, rare body types in sports. Look at, like, Fury, who just, the boxer who just won. Rare body type. Michael Phelps, rare body type. Like Justin Herbert, rare body type. Draft rare body types. Rare body types, you don't just find them around. Like Rousseau, I was high on him, rare body type. This guy's a rare body type, and uh, you want to take rare body types. And uh, he's one of those guys, it's almost like Josh Allen in a sense. I always say, like, oh, it's like, oh, my God, every time he throws the ball. Every time that guy is on screen, <laughs> or every time some dude is, like, forced to c- try to cover him, it's like, oh, my God, what are you going to do? Um, so I, if, if everything goes accordingly for me, way off in the future when we get to it, that guy will be on my fantasy team. <laughs> Draft him now. Put some you, dibs I mean, on him. For the, the that's how Georgia, the dynasty league works. You can draft guys. Georgia around. has two tight ends that are six seven. Do they really? The other guy is John Fitzpatrick, six well, seven. I'm, I'm pretty sure Darnell Washington is the one I'm talking about. But they have John Fitzpatrick, six seven two fifty. Darnell Washington, six seven two sixty five. They also have uh, Ryland. I don't know how to say that last name. Is that like Goaty G- or whatever? Um, six six two forty. I might, you might be talking about the other guy because Darnell Washington has one catch for 25 yards this season. It, it, you know what? Here's the thing, though. It really – I have not paid that, that, that close attention to Georgia, especially offensively. George, um, uh, Darnell Washington, one catch, 25 yards. It's pro- I think it's Washington. John Fitzpatrick, it, three catches for 34 yards. Yeah, Ryland dude, I, has not I'm played. I'm definitely overhyping a guy just because I see him on screen. I'm like, that dude is humongous for a tight end. And that's what I'm doing. But I don't I will continue <laughs> to do it. I don't care. Ooh, that's dude, that's kind of how guy. I when I went to Minnesota, that offensive yeah, the lineman, whole, they have yes, a, they have a tackle. Guy. He is six nine and he's almost four hundred pounds. Yes. We've talked about this. I saw that guy in real life. The real guy the real guy on Georgia, the rare body type that I'm a big fan of is I think he's number ninety nine. He's a defensive tackle. That guy's a freak. He's huge. And I've seen him do stunts like over two usually you cross over one gap. I've seen plays where he goes over two guys and he'll start as a nose tackle and then run around the tackle. It's like, you are too big to be doing that kind of thing, my friend. And he does it Jordan anyway. Jordan Davis. Yeah. He is 6'6", 340. Is that the yeah. 99? Yeah. 99 yes. is six, a little six, bit silly. He's a little bit goofy. He might uh, he might make an impact for someone, I think. He's a yeah, nose Minnesota's tackle. Minnesota's tackle that's really like 6'9", 380 or whatever. Um, he's not nearly as good. 
It's like he's but he's a big guy and he's out he's there, he's so massive I'm, I'm rooting for him. And, and when he's run blocking, he can just put you like in the ground <laughs> if he wants to. Like he really can. He can just make you do whatever you whatever you want. Um, but pass blocking, man, it's rough. <laughs> it's it's rough for him. Maybe like he really just he just like I don't you know just if he's put just him like in for late. Downs. All right, he just like he just like lunges and misses. It, 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 it's it's bad. But I think that I think that kind of wraps things up for us. I have I have one more thing. I'll be at the. Uh, I've never been to a playoff game in any capacity. I will be at mm-hmm. the WNBA Finals in Phoenix on Wednesday. I'm kind of excited about. Oh, will that. you? Yeah, I will be. I never got to the. I, um, you I never like got to the Suns Finals because I was in a. They're a super expensive, and I wasn't in Phoenix for a lot of them. So, this is this is my uh, okay. makeup here. I'm I'm excited to see that. I'll I'll report back in the in the next uh, game. I think they right. got beaten in game one today, though, the Mercury. They did. Yeah. Well, unfortunate. Hope you have a fun I'm time. An, uh, I'm an Aces fan a little bit because they have their best player went to South Carolina. L. Phoenix is ridiculously good at sports right now right. with the Phoenix Suns they in are. the finals and the Cardinals are the only undefeated team and the Mercury are in the finals. Like, that's a pretty ridiculous like run for sports there. Anyway, that's yeah. Cleveland, that up. Cleveland has never. No, they have not. But but they did win a sadly. championship, which is more than like any of the Phoenix teams. LeBron, can say recently. thank you, LeBron. Thank you, LeBron. LeBron's the goat for that. No one else is winning a, a championship with Cleveland. Only LeBron. But oh, you meant you meant the Cavs. I thought you just meant in Cleveland in general. I'm like that goes against. Everything, Everything I've ever known you to say. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, the Browns! The Browns are winning the Super Bowl. Okay, so let me, let me ask you this real quick, real quick. You're worried about your tweets jinxing people. Are you worried about the Browns' tweet? No. Did you not tweet out like Chargers are choking this one, and then they didn't choke that one? <laughs> I said the Chargers kicker sold. Yeah, that and counts. then. This is why moment you, you you tweet about the moment team that has the momentum and then it never works. That's all this is. Oh no, actually, this I, there was something I was very angry about. Okay, I know it's <laughs> not real. I know it's not a real thing. But when a team is fighting for an upset in college football, and they've got like a two percent chance to win, and it's the second quarter, and they're up a couple scores. You do not start tweeting out like, "Yay, they won!" You, everyone is way too. You cannot jinx them like that. Yeah, don't do that. That's like that's like saying, "Oh, he's throwing a no hitter in the third inning or so, or something." Third inning, <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, oh, I, I, don't. You got to yeah. chill. You got to let it marinate a little bit before you get excited. That's why you see, like when my teams play, I almost never tweet. Yeah, I don't want to ruin anything. I don't want to jinx anything. I don't want to be on cold take. I will say whatever. this: we feel like to, I want to say something about baseball. I've been watching the baseball playoffs. I'm a baseball fan oh, now. God. I'm Theo Ash MLB, and I do want to shout out. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I just think that it's cool that the Red Sox put, scored like 14 runs in a playoff game. And I also think uh, the Dodgers are going to win the entire thing. And I also think the Astros offense is pretty cool. So uh, that's a, those are my baseball takes. It's going to be a, uh, Astros versus Dodgers. It's going to be a rematch with, no, rematch with no cheating this time. That's my that's my World Series matchup. I do, enjoy, I do enjoy the baseball playoffs. I think the baseball is good when it's the playoffs. I do not enjoy baseball. I can name... Maybe three players. So can I, but I do. I I can also. Well, now I can name more because I've been watching the playoffs. But any sport in the playoffs is good. That's my hot take. There's not a single like sport that's so boring that it's like in the playoffs. I or like on a high stakes situation, I just like can't watch it. There's no sport that is objectively bad enough that that is the case. Baseball. It's not my favorite, but. It is a good sport in the playoffs. Go baseball. What about like what about like some Olympic sports like? I can. You getting like hype for the most of them? I agree, but yeah. not the, like the marathon. Okay. Okay. Like? Okay. In the Winter Olympics, there's the one where the they marathon. like long distance ski. That one is bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. That, that one one's kind of just like fancy walking. Yeah, that one. Okay, that one's probably bad. That might be the only one. Sorry, long distance skiers out there, but I don't watch your sport, even if it's. We've just metal. lost our whole long distance <laughs> skiing fan base. I know everyone yeah, is going to be it. like, "Oh no!" I was hoping they'd talk about long distance skiing someday, and now they never will. This is all you're going to hear. They never will. But I think that finally wraps things up for us. As always, tons and tons of content coming your way on all platforms. We'll be back. For Friday's episode to kind of preview week six, we'll go over our locks for the next week as well. 
looks like Theo and I are probably going to end up locking the Cowboys against the Patriots. That is true. And uh, just overall, don't miss out on all the great content. As always, from Corn Boy, uh, Gambling Addiction Boy, and Saints, Lemon Boy. Saints covered the spread. I, I survive another week. I get to eat He survives another, another week. week. Yes. Now, actually, before, before I say it, here are the Stay Hot shout-outs. And we'll catch you on the flippity flop. Hey, my name is Charlie, and I'm from Deerfield, Illinois. And I just watched the Bears beat the Raiders. And I want to say that that was the sloppiest game of football I've seen in a long time. Jay Pennsylvania and I'm a Broncos fan. I think the Steelers are frauds. I think they let us come back way too easily. And I think the Broncos are way out of the Raider right now. And fuck Kyle Fuller. My name is Max. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm a Packers fan. And I just want to say, I can't. I can't do it anymore. I can't. I won't. I won't. And I can't. I'm so fucking tired. I don't care. We're going to be the championship game. I don't care. I don't care. We're going to lose. I don't care. I don't care. Dog shit team. Dog shit team. I hate my life. That's all. Uh, this isn't really a rant about, like, my team or the games. It's just more of a rant about Bladen. Please stop using the Kendrick What Top 5 you're smoking on on Twitter and TikTok. Please. I'm Zach Buckler from Canton, Ohio. How the fuck do the Browns keep losing? I can't swear on this, can I? Yeah, whatever. How do the Browns keep losing these close games? The officiating is so bad. I'm also a UNC football fan, and our college team sucks. I'm just so frustrated with football. Goodbye. Hey, my name's Trevor. I'm from Arizona, and I'm mad that the Steelers beat the Broncos today. It makes me mad because we're not going to get a top like 10 draft pick because we're just going to beat up on a bunch of bad teams. We we'll lose to all the good ones. There's no chance to make the playoffs. Our quarterback's 40 years old and can't move, and I just want a good draft pick. I'm also mad that Theo, I didn't get to see Theo at the AFC game when I went. I wanted to talk to that boy. What's going on, guys? This is Steven from Allentown. When I was uh, young, I chose the Detroit Lions as my favorite team because I like the color blue, and look how that's turned out for me. So if you ever need any poor life decision tips, just come to me. I'm your guy. Yo, this is Matt from L.A. All I have to say is, Bladen, what top five are you smoking on? Because my top five is Herbert, 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 Herbert. Bolt up, baby. Let's go. Hey, this is uh, Mason from Duval County, Florida. I don't have much to say, just... I hope Urban Meyer's annual heart attack comes soon because I can't take him because of the team anymore. Hi, um, my name's Aiden. I'm from Indiana. I've called in a couple times before. Uh, I just want to rant for a second about Kansas City. I'm not even a Chiefs fan, but watching Clyde Edwards-Alaire continuously run into the back of his offensive lineman is going to make me lose my mind. I'm Christian Wolf, y'all. And I'm a bear chin. Uh, we haven't had a good QB in 30 years, and we've only won one Super Bowl, and the Packers own us.